Hey everybody, today I'm going to be sharing with you a longer than normal tutorial, but a good tutorial nonetheless. And the tutorial is how I created these fluid acrylic pour uh, placemats for my jewel toned uh, crystal table uh, for this month's 2017 table challenge uh, where I'm trying to create a couple good looks a month, at least one. and. Um, you can see a picture up on the wall there, and that's what inspired this look. Um, if you're not familiar with acrylic pouring, I strongly suggest Googling it, um, but you'll get a full tutorial here with me today. So stay tuned. So for this project, you will need some flat canvas panels. I'm using 12 by 16. I got these at Hobby Lobby. Um, I did not pay full price. They were on sale. And you'll note that there are uh, five in here. I'm only doing a table for four with this look, but I do like to have extra in case something um, doesn't turn out right or um, you have an unexpected guest or you want to use it as decoration elsewhere. Um, it helps just create a more cohesive look. Uh, crappy brushes to mix your paint with. Um, they don't have to be anything special, like you can buy a big value pack. Um, I use these, um, you know, asparagus and zucchinis come on as just like little spots to get set up. Plenty of paper cups, at least one for each color you're using, plus one for water. Um, um, these containers just have water in it. I like to have it on standby. If you don't want to use your brush and you have like a palette knife or an old credit card or something just to mix things up with, um, that's good. Of course, lots of paper towels in a nearby trash bag. Um, because these panels are kind of big, it's tricky to say what you should do these on. Um, I personally, when I have a lot to do, um, or I have the space and the weather's nice, I set a big piece of clear tarp outside and I just put a lot of these types of little racks down or little stools or whatever you have and I just go crazy. Um, but it's difficult if you live in a place that's uh, raining or snowing or you have animals and stuff like that. Uh, because you don't want debris to fall in it. So this time around, I'm going to be using just a lot of these setups. And then under my work desk here, I've got um, some stools and other little shelves that I'm going to put things on. Uh, you're looking for something for your pieces, um, your board to drip down on. Um, one, so you pour out the extra paint in there. But two, uh, they do take a very long time to dry. So as many as you have available, um, just think about it beforehand. Um, if you need to put stuff down on the ground... I'm wearing an apron and old clothes just because I don't care if you know, paint gets on it. Um, so for this project, I'm using, um, I've got an open and an unopened version of metallic blue. Um, I've got some um, Play-Doh green, both metallic. Um, they look a little different. Oh, one's metallic, one's solid. That's what it is. Um, just some jewel tones that I had. I've got a violet. Um, some leftover silver from another project, and then I've got a bunch of little um, Pantone, for the most part, colors that I've either started part of the bottle and haven't finished it, but just little things that I think I can mix into um, these base colors here for some just nice, deep, rich jewel tones. And of course, um, with I acrylics, obviously, they're most of the time they say they're non-toxic and on whatever, but um, I hate to say it, but some brands are better than others with how much they smell, and I'm super sensitive to those things, so I um, try to make sure that I use some sort of painter's mask, so if you have one of those, I highly recommend it, and of course, some sort of gloves, um, because this is messy, so you've got an apron on, old clothes, some gloves, a surface that's covered, probably need the ground cover too, just for um, safety backups and whatnot, um, so just think about all of that before you get started if you need to do it the day ahead of time you know just to make it easy on yourself go for it because it's it can get out of control very quickly so now for this next part i have it on super high speed because like i said there's five pieces of acrylic panel board or canvas board in this um so it's gonna get a little repetitive but i'm showing you a lot of different things so the first thing i'm showing you is um a very general way of mixing acrylics or at least how I like to do it I use paper cups because then it doesn't have to go down my um, my drains and in my pipes not that I think it's a problem but all the same I'm renting I don't want to do that um, but whatever acrylic paint you use there's really 
I couldn't tell you put one part to one part or two to one ratio because it really depends on the brand. How old is the paint? How new is the paint? Have you opened it and maybe left the cover open for, you know, like there are so many different things. And even um, some of the craft stores sell fluid acrylic paint. And sometimes I would say those are either too liquidy for me or not liquidy enough. So it's really fine. Just finding what you like and playing with different consistencies. I love mixing a really watery with a really thick one. Um, it, it takes time to kind of develop um, what styles you like. And acrylic pouring is one of those amazing arts that it there is no way it's going to turn out. Like you cannot sit down and go, I'm going to create this and it's going to look like this, this, and this. It is just, it is just going to be whatever the universe creates for you that day. It is more about stress relief and just enjoying the process. So I'll get into that more in a minute. But what you're seeing here, I have all five acrylic or canvas panels stacked up. Um, I sprayed it with a quick spritz of water and I've already started pouring on the paint. Now this round of paint, I'll be honest, was a little bit thick um, just because I didn't want too much movement in it, if that makes sense. I just kind of wanted a very ethereal, just kind of light flow here. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a, a few minutes. And in case you haven't um, quite figured out, I'll, I'll maybe, if you're interested, go through it in greater detail how I have my, my table set up here. But I'm on a folding table and I've got, I would consider like a turkey baster size pan, like one of those big heavy duty aluminum foil pans and some small, um, I think they're supposed to be shelves for your kitchen. I don't know. I got them at Goodwill ages ago. Um, just little wire racks and I have just stacked, uh, my, my canvas panels up and I am just going to town here and I realize that you can't see perfectly every angle and that's just the nature of some of these acrylic pourings but what I want you to see is just the general process of what I'm doing. I'm pouring on paint and just giving it a good swirl around just trying to cover all of the edges and you know what it's okay that the paint is dripping onto the other canvases because it, there's nothing wrong with it and it's going to be all mixed and marbled anyways and at this point it's not too gray or muddled out it's still um, clear enough where you could tell the different colors are and that's really what's important and to me I just don't have the bankroll to just dump a bunch of extra paint so you can see here there's movement from where I was pouring it um, and again this is just one of those processes that you're gonna have to do a number of times until you figure out what you like or what you're in the mood for that day I've done dozens of um, acrylic pouring paintings uh, for my house. I think I've shared one of my more recent ones on Instagram not too long ago. And if you want to see more, I'd be happy to do more of those. Just let me know. Um, but it doesn't really matter what you do um, as long as you're enjoying the process. And I hope you're noticing as I'm pouring the paints on here, I, I somewhat have a... Um, a process but I, I also kind of don't I just the only thing that's consistent ish is what you see I'm doing here I'm just trying to get the paint to go to the corner so that way it has some easy resistance and just trying to make sure when I tilt it the first go around it's covering the spot that um, has the least amount of gap in it so that way I can focus on the bigger spots without wasting paint going off in spots that don't really need that much extra coverage so do you want to pour your paint into piles and piles of circles, making it look like a, a bullseye target and then, um, you know, tilt and swirl from there? Do that. Do you want to, you know, make your own kind of random drippings? Do that. If you, you know, I'm trying to do them a little bit different in each pouring here at, because different ones create different effects. But even if you did it the same way twice, it wouldn't look the same. And what you can see where some of these bubbles are, some of those are called cells. And that's a whole other video, but essentially, um, some people really love them, some people really hate them, um, and it comes up from essentially the different uh, viscosities of the paints, the way I understand it, mixing together and some other colors coming through and others, you know, kind of separating to get out of the way. Um, it's a whole thing, and there's tons of different theories. Um, look at what I'm doing now. This, um, I'm pouring a lot of the paint in the same piles, creating kind of like a pattern. Um, eh, pattern's a loose word for it, but it's going to create its own cool thing. And so I just want to give you guys, if, if you've never done any acrylic pouring, please try it. It is a little messy, um, but if you prepare it the correct way, you can walk away mostly untouched by the paint. Um, no guarantee on that. 
but it's so relaxing because I have this sped up on like crazy max speed fast forwarding here. But this process takes a little while. It takes time to just kind of wind down and get your paint uh, where you like it. And you can enjoy mixing and, and swirling and, and just kind of playing with the paint on the canvases. And that watching, um, especially if you have some easy listening music on or just, just silence and it's just you and your brain and your mess here, it can be so relaxing and just knowing that no matter what you make, it's going to be cool and different and just a, a beautiful piece of just whatever colors call to you that day. That's awesome. You don't have to have the pressure of, can you tell that this is a horse? Like, is this flower distinguishable to you? No, that's not what it is. And, you know, people can ask you, what inspired you? And you can just make up the weirdest things and it doesn't matter because you could be inspired by nothing and it's just the colors that you chose at the moment and that's how they turned out and there's something great about that um and it's very just peaceful and relaxing and it is a process and it takes a long time to dry and but it's worth it it's absolutely worth it so we're getting through our panels like you said we have five canvas panels this one got a little money for my liking but there was a lot on there so as you can see I moved it around a little bit. I like spraying with a little bit of a water just in a spray bottle just to kind of give um, some extra movement um, easily to, to the paints because um, you don't want to put too much water in, but um, just enough to get the paints flowing sometimes. I think it makes a, a little difference to other people. Maybe not. And I don't know. It, you just, it's just something I've developed over time that I like. So here you can see I'm building on what was already left over from the um, the earlier pours that have kind of dripped down over time. So it's a little silvery on that left side. So I'm trying to add some extra color in, but still bring some of that clear silver, you know, like the clear silver in um, so it's nice and crisp and just kind of enjoying that. And I will say, because we're getting down to some of the last few panels here, um, you can be a little bit more liberal with your paint um, usage. Um, which you can tell here, there's a little bit more applied here. And that's just because I, I worry, I, I, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious at the beginning sometimes, not on purpose, but I worry about having to stop and remix some paint. Um, if you want to just keep mixing paint as you go through this, that's cool too. For me, it kind of interrupts the process a little bit. So I'd rather just make a bunch all at once. Um, but again, it really just depends on how much paint you want to use, what size you're using. I'm using 12 by 16s here. Okay, now really quick while we're looking at this, see how I move that panel away? That's because this is how if I was just doing a one-off, I would do it. Um, I'm tr what I'm trying to do is avoid getting it on the rack um, too much, like a full dripping would create, just so it doesn't stick there when I leave the panel there to dry later on. There's a little bit on there, but not much. So you can see that that aluminum really holds on to all of the acrylic paint that, that builds up. And the great thing about it is, is you work on your painting, let it um, dry for a couple of days, and it doesn't matter if it pulls up in there or not because it's just, you know, it's your scrap pile. Now with this being the last panel that I'm working with here, I am just dumping all of my paint in there. And if I had any extra canvases or things on hand, um, I would have probably used that instead um, because I hate to waste the paint, so I don't want to let it sit overnight and just dry out because I've, I've never had good luck um, resurfacing any paint here at another point. So um, if you have extra, you know, something extra on hand, use that. I didn't. So I am just emptying out all of my cups, all of my paint um, and playing with that. And that's something if you're interested in um, fluid acrylic or pouring acrylic um, playing with, you know, I know for me over the years, I've played with it so much that I know that different amounts of paint can create different looks but that's something you kind of have to learn and get used to especially as your canvas scales um so that's that's definitely um a process again also learning but it's fun and so there's so much paint on here um that look how easily the the paint just fluidly piles off of the um the edges there and to some, that seems a little bit wasteful. To others, like to me, I, but look at that effect. That's a totally different look, a look than what we were getting with some of the other ones that did require a little bit more teeter-tottering, um, but but it's still beautiful and you can still kind of play with it. Hopefully you've been noticing um, the different effects as we go. Now, I um, 
just really want to put this in here quickly. Um, because of all the water on these, um, they do warp as they dry over a couple of days. So once they're completely dry, I layer them up under some parchment paper in between each layer and put a bunch of books and um, things on top of them just to get them to flatten out a little bit. They're never perfectly flat again, but I think that kind of makes it interesting. I did try a satin varnish on one just to see if it made any difference, and uh, it didn't. You, I'm showing you here very quickly just because it made no difference to me, and I put it on very lightly. So as it's dried over a couple of days and you've kind of remolded it or flattened it out, now it's time to play. So I have it on a burgundy red tablecloth, but look at just, just how it is. I think it's beautiful, um, especially with that red. I love that that marble look, but here I'm going to be showing you some, some shots. If you just did a napkin with a pretty napkin ring, this is how it could look. I also took pictures of just with the plate on there. I mean, there's so many great things you can do with these and set your table a million different ways. I'll be sharing all the details of this post on my blog as always with all the details, but I hope you enjoyed this um, inspired place mats with acrylic pouring and hope you check out some of my other videos for my other tablescapes and designs that I've been doing for my self-inflicted challenge this year. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this artistic and free-flowing, um, <laughs> literally free-flowing uh, designing um, placemats setup that we've got here. There, this guy is the limit with how cool you could make this for yourself. So what colors would you like to see done on these types of um, placemats in the future? And do you like this style or do you like a more conservative and um, clean cut placemat tape and place setting. I, I'd be curious to know before because I know this look is not for everybody but I like it so hopefully um, you guys enjoyed it too and if nothing else you might walk away and say I never want to do that but now you know about it and that's that's what I hope you're here for so learn new things and new techniques.